so much uh, for this Q&A. Uh, my name is Patrick. So say, um, can you please, uh, uh, you've mentioned uh, that uh, there is uh, reconstructionism and whatnot and uh, <laughs> something like that. And there is um, kingdom now. So, and you mentioned Pentecostal and charismatic and uh, can you please expatiate, on, or especially on the side, at, at least you've a little bit um, touched on the charismatic and Pentecostal yeah. guys. So what about reform and uh, what, 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 reconstruction and what? Yeah. I can't remember the name, but anyway, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, can you please expatiate on that point yes. so that it can come clear to me? Sure. Let me give the mark to John. He'll He'll be far better suited in answering that one since he wrote the book on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's dealt with in my book uh, today and tomorrow, which is on sale outside. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm off. Uh, you know, Kingdom Now Theology sets out to reconstruct society. They even talk about a group salvation, not individual or personal salvation. So they talk about Christians must uh, dominate every club every hospital, every school, every court of law, we must take over society and reconstruct society. Only then can we say, Jesus, we've Christianized the whole world, you can come back now. Of course, it's a false theology. He will build his own kingdom. We're not going to usher in the kingdom of God. Things are not going to get better and better. And in fact, the Bible tells us very clearly that Christians will always be a minority in every generation, never a majority. Jesus spoke about the broad road and the narrow road. The broad road, he says, there are many people on that road that leads to destruction. But the narrow road said, few there be that find that way, the road that leads to eternal life. So we need not be surprised that we are a minority. We're meant to be. So. Because society is never going to be reconstructed to the extent that we Christianize the whole world. So it's a false theology. Okay. I think also on, on that is the, on the, the reconstructionist side of dominionism is what you're asking. Is the more reformed um, theology uh, type churches. So I mentioned the Roman Catholic Church who were definitely amillennial uh, in their understanding and they practiced dominionism. They tried to take control of the entire globe. They tried to Christianize nations. They tried to force nations to become Christian nations. And, and it doesn't work, obviously. And, and so it's, it's that very principle. That's why you see many of the, the older uh, reform type organizations even in our own country are very politically aligned because their understanding is they've got to reconstruct society and that's why they have to be involved in every form of 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 government in fact just to say this that the one party in our government who is christian and is premillennial and not replacement is the um, acdp they're the only ones if, if you look at American politics, all those people that are involved uh, around the president at this point, who is not a believer, but I believe God has raised Trump like a King Cyrus for this time, ungodly man, but he surrounded himself with Christians. All those Christians, almost all of them, are dominionist, reconstructionist, or kingdom now proponents. They're, trying to, they're going to try and Christianize that nation. It's going to fail. Another question here. Um, hang on. Uh, the, the, question, the, the um, point you raised about the peace treaty with Israel, um, the fact that Donald Trump and Jared Kushner have presented one as backfired or backfiring, and then Vladimir Putin is coming to try and create another one. Is this, could be this a precursor, a curtain raiser to the very peace treaty? 
Yes, these three trees trees are not the one that Daniel 927 speaks about because that is a seven year peace agreement, but they could be the precursor to it. We can see that the world is crying out free peace. Exactly what they should be crying out just before the rapture. The, the world is desperate for a solution to the Middle East conflict. And they, every statesman is trying to get that peace agreement signed. So you have this peace agreement on the Trump side, you have others on the other side, uh, but it's not that one that Daniel wrote, wrote about. However, the, where it says in Daniel 9.27 that the Antichrist will confirm the, uh, an agreement with Israel. That word confirm in the original Hebrew actually means strengthens. So it implies that there's an existing agreement that the Antichrist comes along and strengthens or adds to or consolidates or makes it happen. So uh, it's possible that these which are precursors to that one will be strengthened by the Antichrist. So you use elements of Donald Trump's one and any other agreement that's in existence then and strengthen them or consolidate them into that one, the seven year one. Um, I'm just going to ask a very practical question. Involve a lot of um, you said 50% of the churches are involved in replacement theology. I, I, I think that's a lot more than that. Now, as believers in Jesus Christ, um, if we are in these churches, what do we do? Is there anything in the Word that is pointing us in the right direction? Because I'm asking you that because it happened to me myself. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just, just to say, I didn't mention 50 percent. I said the majority. John mentioned 50 percent of the church. I'm going to get raptured. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question, there'll be a lady attending here tomorrow who is riding down from Winterton. Uh, I got to know about her through a relative of hers in Margate, who I know. And uh, she sent me a testimony this week on WhatsApp and told me how she came out of a certain reformed church 10 years ago uh, when she came into the truth of, the, of what we've been speaking about here today. She had a real born again experience and her eyes were opened to premillennial truths and she became a pre-tribulation rapturist overnight and uh, when I heard that it, it reminded me of what it says in, uh, in Revelation 17 and 18 where uh, the false church is portrayed as the great harlot or the great whore which is the unfaithful church because the faithful church is called the bride of Christ and the counterfeit for that is the great whore or harlot that is unfaithful it's not the true church and what does God say when he describes her, spiritual Babylon? Come out from among him, my people, lest you be partakers of her sins. So, there comes a time when you, wherever you find yourself, that you have to say, my church teaches such and such, but I see in the word of God this and that, and it's different. And then God says, come out from among them. So, there comes a time when you have to choose other the tradition of your church or the truth of God's word in the Bible and it's a tough choice yeah this side right in the middle yeah we'll come to you now In a sermon I listened to recently, mention was, <coughs> sorry, mention was made of an agreement signed by the Pope and the head of Islam, and I'm not too sure whether the Chief Rabbi was involved, which was to bring world peace and also possibly a world religion. Where does that fit into everything? And uh, in view of that, where does the Pope fit in as a Christian in view of Jesus saying, I am the way and the only way? 
I think the uh, John John can answer some of it, but there's no doubt in my mind Revelation 17 is speaking directly to the papacy, um, the woman who uh, the whore who rides the beast, and who has brought all the false religions together. Uh, we saw within the church um, ecumenism. So that took place uh, for a period of time and then it moved into interfaith. And so now we embrace all faiths. And every time you shift, you've got to drop everything to the lowest common denominator, right? Mm. So at uh, ecumenism, we've got, well, we can't speak about the Holy Spirit because you've got the charismatics on this end and the Calvinists on this end. And we can't speak about this topic because some believe in infant baptism, others believe in full immersion. So you drop it down to the lowest common denominator and you're not left with a heck of a lot. But at that point, it makes it a lot easier to now start embracing other faiths. And so the next step is interfaith, and they're dropping that down to the lowest common denominator again, which is going to be what at the end of the day? God is a God of love, which means what? I mean, it means anything, right? And, and so we, we've seen that shift, even within the church. And, and people are so afraid to make a stand for truth today, because you're going to get rejected and you're going to be uh, labeled as being discriminatory and you're intolerant and, 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 and the list goes on and on and on. Well, folks, we've got to decide. Are we going to fear God and no man or are we going to fear men? Um, and that's the tough choice. So uh, th that's coming. Um, it's already here. I, I believe that the papacy is a totally anti-Christ system. It has been right from the beginning. It's never been biblical. Uh, it's, just, it, it's just Babylonianism. Um, that's, that's all it is and uh, when, when, you, when you look at the, the mindset uh, as a dominionist mindset how different is Islam? because didn't Islam try and do the same thing? ISIL had their final push a global domination that, that was what the last thing was to bring about an Islamic caliphate and it failed and so in, 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 in uh, Catholicism uh, Rome, in Rome the Vatican is a sovereign nation it's a city, it's a nation. It has its own currency, its own passport, it has its own laws, it's its, its own religion. How different is Islam? It's the same thing, isn't it? They also have their own laws, their own, uh, they want their own currency, they want uh, their own everything. And, and so it's the same dominionist type, type mindset. And so uh, both of them are in fact actually in the same camp. And so maybe at the lower levels people don't see it, but at that high level, I mean, what, what Islam wants and what the papacy wants is the same thing. And so it makes it easy for them to, in fact, come together. And there's no doubt that that's going to play out in, in the last days. You want to add to that, John? No, good, good. Uh, most Bible scholars believe that the, the uh, false prophet will turn out to be the last pope. And who would unite world religion? And the, the basis for that is that the woman rides the beast, the woman being the harlot. And the Bible tells us about that harlot, she's called Babylon, the great harlot, that uh, she has a city, and that city is founded on seven hills. Now, what city in the world was uh, built on seven hills? Rome. What city is a city within a city within the geographical boundaries of Rome? The Vatican City. And the Bible specifically tells us in, uh, in Revelation 17, verses 9 and 18, that that city, which is, that it's built on seven hills, that the, that the uh, head of that city will be the false prophet, the woman who rides the beast. Yeah. The Antichrist is the beast. The woman and the beast, they, the beast helps the Antichrist to come into power. They in cahoots with each other. They're in tandem. They are Satan's twins to implement his end time agenda. They work together. So we have every reason to believe that the last pope will be the false prophets. It's, 